Today, three more quotes from T.S. Eliot. Except for the point, the still point, there would be no dance, and there is only the dance. Since our concern was speech, and speech impelled us to purify the dialect of the tribe, and urge the mind to aftersight and foresight. The end is where we start from, and every phrase, and sentence that is right, where every word is at home, taking its place to support the others, the word neither diffident nor ostentatious, an easy commerce of the old and the new, common word exact without vulgarity, the formal word precise but not pedantic, the complete consort dancing together. Those were all from the four quartets, by the way. Language is something that I find very precious and very difficult or a challenge in some ways not to abuse the gift of. And um, for me, precision in language is almost an obsession or, or saying precisely what you mean to say and meaning precisely what it is that is said, which are not in fact the same things. Before reading the four quartets and reading these specific excerpts from it, I already had in mind an idea that there existed such things as right sentences. Sentences in which every word is at home, taking its place to support the others. In my mind, the point, the still point, is absolute truth, or is God. And, and without that point, there would be no dance. But I find it interesting that he uses the idea once, but I find it interesting that he uses the imagery of dancing once again when he shows a portrait of a right sentence, is the complete consort, the consort of words, dancing together. That is, in a right sentence, in a sentence where each word is where it should be and means what it should mean, where the meaning of the whole is of a greater amount than the sum of their individual meanings. Such a sentence dances, but without a fixed point, there could be no dance. And so my question is, what is the fixed point of language? And I think ultimately it is, it is God, or, or the fixed point of anything is going to be God, or absolute truth. But with language, something so subjective and so so finite and malleable, something that changes as we change. Um, where is the fixed point, and how are we to relate to that fixed point in our use of language? It doesn't bother me when we make up new words. I, I think that's wonderful, and it's part of the development of new language, uh, of our language. But what bothers me is when words change their meanings. Or, or when words become used so much that their meaning implicitly becomes less intense. The most common example I can think would be swear words. There are people who use swear words and use um, pretty, pretty big, in my mind, swear words for very little things. And I always wonder what those people are going to do come a time when they want to use big swear words, when they are, in fact, very angry. Pe when people aren't angry, they'll use the F word. And what I want to know is, when they are angry, what words will they use? There was a C.S. Lewis quote, um, something to the effect of, don't use the word infinitely when you mean very, because otherwise, when you want to describe something truly infinite, you will have no word left. I wrote down in my notebook my question, so I'll just read it to you, because I think I expressed it better then. Must there be some fixed point in language to allow these right sentences in which words are dancing together? The subjectivity of language, of the changing meanings of words, and the impossibility of being understood or perfectly understanding your own meaning, where is the fixed point that forms the dance?